What's going on guys and welcome to another crack a pack episode today we're opening up a draft only set actually conspiracy take the crown so this was actually formed uh, the second conspiracy set and it is definitely just made for draft there are cards in here that will particularly call out uh, the draft itself. Uh, and there will also be, if I'm not mistaken, uh, hidden agenda cards, things like that. So we'll get to talk about some really interesting stuff with this one. And we will go through it as if we are drafting it. So our first one here is Child of Night. It is a 2-1 for 1 and a black with lifelink. Very, very classic card. We've seen this for years. Uh, reprinted a million times. It's perfectly fine. It's a perfectly serviceable 2-drop. Not anything in particular that I'm like super stoked about with this card. But if you are in maybe a life gain style deck... This is perfectly fine two drops, so not something I'm interested in first picking by any means, but not bad. Uh, Cloaked Siren is a 3-2 three, for three and a blue. It does have flash and flying, so you can play it anytime you can play an instant, uh, and it is evasive. At four mana, a 3-2 flyer is pretty good, but being able to play it at instant speed is just even better. This is absolutely a kind of card that I would love to play. I love flyers, things like that, that are going to be evasive, deal some damage in the air. Uh, much, much better, in my opinion, than Child of Night, and so for that reason, definitely interested in that. But... Uh, Fiery Fall we have here is an instant for 5 and a red. It deals 5 damage to target creature. Now that's obviously a lot, but uh, you can also basic land cycle it for 1 and a, uh, a red, excuse me. So you can discard it, pay the cost, search your library for a basic land card of any color, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. This is great not only for removal purposes, but also for fixing. So if you're in multiple colors, and you, uh, you're you looking for maybe you're in green red and you don't have any green outs, maybe this is the kind of card that you need because you can basic land cycle it even on as early as turn two and then pull out the green uh, lands that you need. So it's actually really, really good in my opinion. Very, very flexible. It is obviously high costed, but it deals five damage to target creatures. So that's going to be a lot of damage to no matter what. I mean, that's going to deal with a lot. So I really, really like this. Uh, I do think I'd take it over the siren, to be honest. Uh, Stormkirk Patrol is a 4-3 for 4 and a black. When it deals combat damage to a player, you put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. I don't like this card very much. Uh, for 5 mana, a 4-3 is not very good. It's going to be outclassed a lot of the time, especially because it's lower on the toughness end. It's not going to actually be able to attack in as often as you would probably like it to to start gaining those 1-1 one -one counters. So this is great if you're in a position where you just are taking over the game. This is going to close out that game even quicker. But in a, a board stall position or a position where you're losing, it is not going to be digging you out of anything. And so I'm not excited about this card at all. Definitely would not take it. Uh, Plummet is an instant for one in a green destroy target creature with flying. Again, this is a card that we've seen around a lot. Uh, it's actually really, really efficient removal for green. Uh, you can usually get away with main decking one of these. I wouldn't main deck more than that because some decks will just not have flying creatures, unfortunately. And in that case, this is just a dead card. But uh, great sideboard option for sure if you can get your hand on a your hands on a couple of these during the the draft and you are in green. It's a great option to have open to you. Not first pickable by any means, but definitely good. Uh, Doom Traveler is a 1-1 one, one for 1 white. When it dies, you put a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. This is a very, very good 1-drop because it is always going to be a 2-for-1, uh, despite very particular corner cases maybe, but in general, they're going to have to use either two creatures or two pieces of removal to deal with the 1. That's fantastic. I love that. Uh, not only that, but the, the token that's left behind is a flyer, which means it's evasive on its own. It's going to be able to deal maybe a couple points of damage, ideally, uh, and even if it only does one or two, it's going to be worth it. So definitely a good card. Not first pickable by any means, but definitely a good card. Uh, Divination, sorcery for two and a blue, you draw two cards. Pretty straightforward card, but definitely okay. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with card draw in draft. I tend to not want too much of it, though. Uh, a lot of times what I have found is if you take too much card draw, you're just kind of spinning your wheels drawing a lot of cards. And while you're probably going to find the pieces that you need eventually, you've wasted two or three turns just drawing cards. Uh, and so a lot of times that's enough time for the opponent to start taking over the game a little bit and you certainly don't want that uh, and so I like having card draw it's not a, a huge priority on my list but if I was in blue and it was later in the draft I would definitely be interested in divination not as a first pick at all. 
uh, ravenous lacroque uh, a thing. Uh, sorry for the pronunciation there. It's a two four for three and a green. It does have vigilance. And then for six and a green, you can monstrosity three this. So if it is not already monstrous, uh, you put three one one counters on it and it becomes monstrous. I don't particularly like this card. Uh, yes, it gives you a mana sink late game, and for four mana, you do get a Vigilance 2-4, which is okay. It's not great, in my opinion, uh, but it's just way too much mana for something like this, and by the time you could Monstrosity this, it's probably going to be dealt with, so not super exciting, in my opinion. Hexplate Golem is a 5-7, of any color, artifact creature, uh, vanilla also. Really don't like this. I think we talked about this in the last uh, Cracker Pack episode. Those creatures with big uh, big butts and not much power for the mana cost, is they're really just not high priority picks. They're pretty bad in my opinion. And so for that reason, just super uninterested in this. The only upside I can say about this is that it does fit into any deck. So if you just happen to be lacking an end game bomb, Maybe this is something you pick up just for that situation, but generally speaking, this is pretty unplayable in my opinion. Uh, Wild Griffin is a 2-2 for two and a white. It does have flying. Uh, pretty straightforward card. I'm fairly certain we've seen this reprinted a number of times too. Uh, and it's actually a really serviceable three drop. Uh, being able to fly for 2-2 two, two, uh, at three, that's perfectly fine by me. Uh, it's not, in my opinion, a better pick than Fiery Fall. Uh, but it is definitely a good a good pick. I would absolutely want this and maybe a blue white style uh, Flyers deck or something like that. Absolutely perfect there. Uh, unfortunately, not first pickable in my opinion. <clears throat> Our first uncommon is a uh, Fang of the Pact. So it's a 5-3 for 5 and a green and it has melee. So whenever this creature attacks, it gets plus 1 plus 1 until the end of the turn for each opponent you attacked with a creature this combat. Uh, worth noting that generally speaking when you drafted this set, if I'm not mistaken, and correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong, uh, but you normally did draft pods and then it was multiplayer games, so you actually, or uh, like four player games or something like that. Uh, and so uh, it is worthwhile noting that the melee on this is actually pretty good, it's not bad at all. Uh, and then at the beginning of combat on your turn, another target creature you control gains melee until the end of the turn. That is also pretty big. Uh, if a creature has multiple instances of melee, each does trigger separately, so you can actually stack melee, which is insane. So I really, really like this card. It's definitely a green bomb for sure. Like it just, it's gonna take over a game if you can get it out. Uh, for that reason, I think I like it more than Fiery Fall. Uh, it's just, it's too powerful. Uh, it's just such a good creature for sure. Uh, Ghostly Prison is an enchantment for two and a white. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature he or she controls that is attacking you. Uh, so this is a really interesting kind of prison style card. I found it's not great in draft. It's okay. Uh, definitely, again, you're going to be playing against multiple people at once. Uh, and so it's kind of a diplomacy card. It's like, hey, don't attack me because you're going to have to spend mana to do it. In that instance, it's definitely at its best, uh, and so I can see taking it. I don't think over Fang of the Pack, uh, but it is definitely pretty good in that instance. In general, paying two to attack is definitely a problem, but if they're winning the game, this doesn't really slow them. Uh, it slows them down, but it's not going to slow them down that much. So I'd rather have something that with a little more board presence personally. Coordinated Assault is an instant for one red. Up to two target creatures each get plus one, plus zero, and game first strike until end of turn. This is a great combat trick, no doubt about it. Uh, for one mana, giving a buff to two creatures, plus giving them first strike, it's, it's pretty awesome. Uh, I, I actually really, really like that. Definitely not more than Fang of the Pack, though. Fang of the Pack is just a game ender, in my opinion, and so this just does not compete. And then our rare is Throne of the High City, so it's a land, can tap for a generic mana, and then you can pay for, tap it, and sacrifice it, and you become the Monarch. The Monarch was a uh, key ability uh, in this set. It was really, really cool. Basically meant that you got extra value for being the Monarch, and then if somebody attacked you, they could steal it. Really interesting dynamic for sure. Uh, one that unfortunately did not really come into play in this pack, uh, but uh, Throne of the High City, not worth playing. It's just not very good in my opinion. Uh, hired Heist, 
uh, is the conspiracy card for this set. Uh, so it is hidden agenda. So you start the game with this face down in the command zone and secretly name a card. You may turn this conspiracy face up at any time and reveal the chosen name. Uh, whenever a creature you control with the chosen name deals combat damage to a player, you can pay one blue, and if you do, you draw a card. Very similar to Curious Obsession, which is now uh, one of the cards that we see in mono blue aggro and things like that, uh, and the Simic aggro deck that we tried out. Uh, it's actually okay uh, to be able to draw cards like that, but I generally am not super stoked on this one. A lot of these conspiracy cards are pretty good. There's a lot of rare conspiracies that are really, really good. Uh, but definitely not Im more important in my opinion than Fang of the Pack. Uh, just a pretty easy solid pick. It's going to be able to take over a game for sure and it not only boosts itself but can boost other creatures so I really like that. So uh, that's my pick. Feel free to disagree in the comment section below but if you enjoyed this episode please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below and as always please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content but with that I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next Cracker Pack episode.